Good morning, it's Jane, and it's time for another Bible reading. Today, we are reading um, Job 10 through 13. Now, I am reading from the English Standard Version, and we are following the Blue Letter Bible chronological plan for the year of reading your Bible. So, as always, let's start with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for all the beautiful things that you present to us each and every day. Lord, too many times we pass up the beauty that this earth offers us. It always gives us some kind of lesson. And Lord, we pray that as we begin to read these, that we will have a greater understanding of what Job was going through, all the trials and tribulations, and how yet sometimes ours may seem trivial compared to what Job experienced. And Lord, we pray that you will help us to learn that there is always hope and light at the end of the tunnel. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Let's go. Got to get the eyes on. Now Job begins to uh, plead to God. I loathe my life. I will give free utterance to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, Do not condemn me. Let me know why you contend against me. Does it seem good to you to oppress, to despise the works of your hands in the favor of the designs of the wicked? Have you eyes of flesh? Do you see as a man sees? Are your days as days of man, or your years as a man's years? that you seek out my iniquity and search for my sin. Although you know I am not guilty, and there is none to deliver out of your hand. Your hands fashioned and made me, and now you have destroyed me altogether. Remember that you made me like clay, and will you return me to the dust? Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? You clothed me with skin and flesh, and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and steadfast love, and your care has preserved my spirit. Yet these things you hid in your heart. I know that this was your purpose. If I sin, you watch me, and do not acquit me of my iniquity. If I am guilty, woe to me. If I am in the right, I cannot lift up my head. For I am filled with disgrace, and look upon my affliction. And were my head lifted up, you would hunt me like a lion, and again work wonders against me. You renew your witnesses against me, and increase your vexation toward me. You bring fresh troops against me. Why did you bring me out from the womb? Would that I have died before any eye had seen me, and were as though I had not been carried from the womb to the grave? Are my days few? Then cease and leave me alone, that I may find a little cheer before I go, and I shall not return to the land of darkness and deep shadow, the land of gloom like thick darkness, like deep shadow without any order, where light is as thick as darkness. And Zophar speaks. He tells him he deserves worse. Can you imagine? Then Zophar, the name of height, answered and said, Should a multi multitude of words go unanswered, and a man full of talk be judged right? Should your babble silence men, and when you mock, shall no one shame you? For my sake, my doctrine is pure, and I am clean in God's eyes. But, oh, that God would speak and open his lips to you, and that he would tell you the secrets of wisdom. For he is manifold in understanding. Know then that God exacts of you less than your guilt deserves. Can you find out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limit of the Almighty? It is higher than heaven. What can you do? Deeper than the Sheol, what can you know? Its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. 
If he passes through and imprisons and summons a court, who can turn him back? For he knows worthless men when he sees iniquity. Will he not consider it? But a stupid man will get understanding when a donkey's colt is born a man. If you prepare your heart, you will stretch out your hands toward him. If an iniquity is in your hand, put it far away, and let not injustice injustice dwell in your tents. Surely then you will lift up your face without blemish. You will be secure and will not fear. You will forget your misery. You will remember it as waters that have passed away. And your life will be brighter than the noonday. Its darkness will be like the morning. And you will feel secure because there is hope. You will look around and take your rest in security. You will lie down and none will make you afraid. Many will court your favor. But the eyes of the wicked will fail. All way of escape will be lost to them and their hope is to breathe their last. And of course, Job has a reply. No doubt you are the people, and wisdom will die with you, but I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know such things as these? I am a laughing stock to my friends, I, who called to God, and he answered me, a just and blameless man. I am a laughing stock. In the thought of one who is at ease, there is contempt for misfortune. It is ready for those whose feet slip. The tents of robbers are at peace, and those who provoke God are secure, who bring their God in their hand. But ask the beast, and they will teach you. The birds of the heavens, they will tell you or the bushes of the earth, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. Does not the ear test words as the palate tastes food? Wisdom is with the aged, and understanding in length of days. With God our wisdom and might, he has counsel and understanding. If he tears down, none can rebuild. If he shuts a man in, none can open. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the land. With him are strength and sound wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leads counselors away stripped, and judges he makes fools. He looses the bonds of kings and binds a waistcloth on their hips. He leads priests away stripped and overthrows the mighty. He deprives of speech those who are trusted and takes away the discernment of the elders. He pours contempts on princes and loosens the belt of the strong. He uncovers the deeps out of darkness and brings deep darkness to light. He makes nations great, and he destroys them. He enlarges nations and leads them away. He takes away understanding from the chiefs of the people of the earth and makes them wander in a trackless waste. They grope in the dark without light, and he makes them stagger like a drunken man. And Job continues, Still, I will hope in God. Behold, my eyes has seen all this. My ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. But I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue my case with God. As for you, you whitewash with lies. Worthless physicians are you all. Oh, that you would keep silent, and it would be your wisdom. Hear now my argument and listen to the pleadings of my lips. Will you speak falsely for God and speak deceitfully for him? Will you show him partiality toward him? Will you plead the case for God? Will it be well with you when he searches you out? Or can you deceive him as one deceives a man? 
he will surely rebuke you, if in secret you show partiality. Will not his majesty terrify you, and the dread of him fall upon you? Your maxims are proverbs of ashes, your defenses are defenses of clay. Let me have silence, and I will speak, and let come on me what may. Why should I take my flesh in my teeth, and put my life in my hand? Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Yet I will argue my ways to his face. This will be my salvation, that the godless shall not come before him. Keep listening to my words. And let my declaration be in your ears. Behold, I have prepared my case. I know that I shall be in the right. Who is there? Who will contend with me. For then I would be silent and die. Only grant me two things, that I will not hide myself from your face. Withdraw your hand far from me, and let not dread of you terrify me. Then call, and I will answer. Or let me speak, and you reply to me. How many are my iniquities and my sins? Make me know my transgression and my sin. Why do you hide your face and count me as your enemy? Will you frighten a driven leaf and pursue dry chaff? For you write bitter things against me and make me inherit the iniquities of my youth. Yet put my feet in the stocks and watch all my paths. You set a limit for the soles of my feet. Man wastes away like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. That's it for today's reading. All right, guys, I hope you go out there and have a wonderful day. Be kind to one another. Love one another. Get out there and see this big, beautiful world. And I will see you again tomorrow for another reading. We're in Job for a couple more days. And then we go back to Genesis. So uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.